Hello, this is Dr. Michael Myers, Associate Professor in Health Sciences at National University in San Diego, California. In this short video presentation, I'm going to show you how to do a t-test, a one-sample t-test, in StatCrunch. A typical example I use in my class actually comes from the Statistics for Dummies website. I've given you the website for this file if you want to go ahead and go get the data and work on it along with us in this video. So to do the one sample t-test, this is where we're actually going to look at a set of data, a quantitative set of data that's ratio or interval level, and we're going to compare it to some national average. We want to know if our sample population is significantly different than the population at large. And if we have one set of data, we can do that with a one sample t-test. To do that in StatCrunch, it's pretty easy. Once you have the sheet open in StatCrunch, you simply click on the data tab as we've done before, click on load, and from file, I'll go ahead and load that in. Again, I'll leave that column name box clicked because I want that first column to be clicked. Scroll down, click on load file, and it brings in the data. There's 474 people were surveyed for this salary study. I don't think we want to type all that in by hand. To do the t-test, we simply click on the stat tab, go to t-test, one sample, and we have all the data, so we'll click with data. Again, we'll select our column that has the data in it. That's going to be our salary. We don't really care about the ID number. That's just the ID number they were given for the study. In the middle of this dialog box is where we're going to put in our hypothesis. By default, for the one sample t-test, this is set to zero. But we want to change this to what our population value is going to be. And for this example, we know it's the $32,000. So we're going to put in our null hypothesis. If nothing's going on, then the salaries in our sample that we've surveyed should be equal to the national average for this region, or the average salary when the poll was taken. In this case, it's $32,000. So we'll type that in. And notice the software is smart in this instance. It's actually giving us the alternative hypothesis that the mean here is not going to be equal to $32,000. That's our alternative hypothesis. We'll come back and do the confidence interval in just a bit. We can just click Compute, and it will put the data into another dialog box. So we can then, of course, copy and paste into our report. So you see, actually, StatCrunch has spit back the hypotheses for us. So there's our null and alternative hypothesis. There's a sample mean, 34,419. It calculates the standard error, the degrees of freedom, which, of course, are n minus 1, so we have 473. The test statistic is 3.8, and the p-value is 0 0.0022. So this tells us we have a significant result because our p-value is less than 0 0.05. And remember, too, we can go back and we can look at the test statistic and compare that to the critical value. So looking in the back of the book, we compare that test statistic 3.08. Again, we have 473 degrees of freedom, so we're down at the bottom of the table. Our critical value is 1.96. We're past the 120. So we compare 1.96 to 3.08. Our test statistic is greater than the tabled value, which also tells us that we have a significant result that's reflected in the p-value. Remember, the p-value is the probability of seeing this size test statistic or larger in our sample set. So here we have a significant result. The next thing we can do to look at these salaries is calculate the confidence interval. To do that, we simply go back to the stat tab. We click on T stats, one sample, with data. Now we go down here, we select salary again, and now we click on the confidence interval, which we leave a 0.95, so we're 95% confidence interval. We click compute, and we have the dialog box. We can take this and again, copy and paste this into our report, and now it calculates the confidence intervals for us. Again, here's the sample mean, degrees of freedom. This is the lower and upper limits for the confidence interval. What does this mean? Well, this tells us that if we continue to sample, we knock on 100 more doors, we'll find 95% of the time that their income will be between 32,878 and 35,960. The population average for our one sample t-test here was 32,000. That's what we used to do our comparison. Notice that our 32,000 is not within our confidence interval. That's another signal 
that we have a significant result here and that our population, the sample that we've taken of these people, they don't fit the national average profile. That's all we know. We don't know why. We don't know if it's actually important. It could be that we've wandered into an area that's very wealthy and they're skewing this sample set into being a more wealthy community. But all we know is that the people here, if we keep sampling, are going to have a salary range within this limit. A salary range within 32,878 and 35,960. So this is a very quick way to get StatCrunch to calculate the test statistic for you. It will calculate the probability value and the 95% confidence interval, all in StatCrunch.